Okay, we are forcing gases into our atmosphere, blowing up like a balloon, scrubbing against the particles that are trying to get into our atmosphere, which is light and solar particles and solar wind and all of that stuff. I just did a treatise on, on energy and I can sh I'm showing every single way that the ionosphere at 2700 degrees is being heated from the interaction of the sunlight smashing into this layer. That layer rotates with us. It's being concussed and that is where the push to shove is in the scrub. And that is where all the heat is. And the more we blow up our atmosphere the more it's going to scrub. We will accept these electrons to make things grow and to do all the things on earth but we will only accept so much. We're taking the solid things and turning them into gases blowing up ourselves like a just a gigantic balloon. It's the push to shove and the scrub that is causing this heat. Now we have to make electricity that is on the earth in little boxes that they don't go anywhere, they don't expand, they don't blow up like the carbon, uh, CO2 and all that stuff. Here's how we're going to do it. Okay, there's no question the climate has changed and it's disastrous not only for a day or two or a week or two. Listen to this. Permanent. Our entire West is built on, on irrigation. And if we don't have that, we don't have an economy. Our agricultural base is based on having moisture in topsoil, much less to have irrigation supplies. And our forest fires are just, our forests are just ready to blow up right now. All right, just to, it's obvious. Anybody that understands heat and temperature and moisture and evaporation understands the biosphere which we live on needs a certain amount of moisture to to be productive and it is being evaporated very quickly and I, I have some other things to speak about that later but let's just this is a disaster that is just happening there's nothing we can do about it unless we har harness the amount of explosive gases we're given. We're looking at a permanent situation. That's why we have to attack the source of this problem. It's permanent. Which is climate change. Exactly. Yeah, and you, so you mentioned the bill, and obviously that the, the, the sort of huge chunk of the climate investment uh, that was in the initial proposal is not in that sort of negotiation. They're talking about the money they're putting into being able to do the research to fix these problems. When they won't look at the research that's already done that I'm going to show you that can possibly fix this within a couple of weeks. Okay, this is really, really very, very simple. They're talking big deal now about muon and, and electrons, muon neutrinos and electron neutrinos. Now, what are muon and electron neutrinos? I will actually show you them in our light experiments. And a muon is nothing more than a black ball, is this muon. And they call it a muon neutrino when they're at rest. They're not banging into anything, they're just sitting there. It's a muon neutrino attached to an electron neutrino. So there they are right there. I'm going to call them muons and electrons because that's what they call the flavor. They Because then it becomes a muon um, well, I'll show you in a second, Muon muons and, and um, electron showers. Now, the electron portion, which is the explosive part, can come in red or green or blue. Red is the weakest, blue is the strongest, green is in the middle. And all it is is the spin. So this is the particle, which is a dipole just like that. There's a positive and a negative, and as it spins through the air, if it's a very long wavelength, slowly spinning, but you know, I, 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 they might go the same speed, I can't say for sure, but I know for sure that they spin different speeds. This spins slow, is this red, this is green, and here is blue. It's so fast you can't really hardly make it out as a particle, It's as a separate particle. We can see the red and the green very easily as separate particles, the muon and the electron. When they concuss, they create showers, which I will show you or already have. So this is the con concussion flavor. Now it's going into a different flavor. This is the flavor of non-concussed light. They also have what they call the color, and like, like I told you, the red, the blue, and the green are the colors, and they're just different spin rates. All right, so let's look at what CERN wants, and they do want just exactly what I told you. The muon neutrino, an electron neutrino, is the at-rest state. 
when they concuss and they create what they call cherry Yankoff radiation, muon doesn't change at all. No, no change whatsoever. The electron turns into electron showers. This is concussion flavor. All right. Same color. It still stays green. The color stays green, but the flavor changes to showers, just like that. Now let's show you exactly what I'm saying. All right, the key to this whole thing is being able to accelerate the light. And that's what we did here using a Venturi. That's why you see this white, explosive, energetic electron showers. Now, what did they start from? Here's exactly what they started from, just like CERN says, a black and a white ball. The black one is the muon, and the white one is the electron. And they, when they concuss, they create showers. And that's when these particles came right to here, they explode, and they literally separate the black from the white. And I can show you that. Very simply, we did it, and Rod Warren did this, and I, and I don't know how he got these fabulous shots, but they are fabulous. And there is the black ball literally separating from the white. This is the white electron showers, and then they reattach to the black balls over here, which is the muons. Now, this is identical to what CERN is looking to see. We started with light. Light is the most tiniest particle we know of, other than what we have now seen is these, because this right over here is bosons. These are the W and Z bosons. This has increased about 200 times, apparently, they say, from what it started coming in here. Because if we start with the particle, we end with a muon, we have increased its value of energetic crashing, you know, like a piston, 200 times, pushing it 200 times harder. Now, if we can go pulse, 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 we go boom, 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 boom. And what we're doing is pushing a whole flood of electrons. So it's called electron flood, flood flood, flood, instead of a piston going up and down. We're flooding electrons into a battery or into an air conditioner, or refrigerator, or heating unit, whatever. Car, running in a car. And you can regulate the speed at how quick you want to pulse this and how much energy you want out. And the energy increase can be used to, to facilitate the driving force of the laser, which you're going to take off, let's say, even 50%. You still have half of what you started with absolutely free. So if you could put this in a car, you'd never have to stop driving, ever. And you could just regulate how much you wanted to go, how fast you wanted these pulses to go. Now, I put out a, a diagram of exactly how we can make a harvest plate over here. And, and, or actually, it's going to be start over here, and the solar harvester will be over here. And it's very simple. Now, you're going to have to look at my treatise. I just did a treatise on energy. And that is, and that, trust me, I've, this goes, well, I'm going to just show you because, well, good enough time to brag. All right, this was my original treatise on all electronic interactions and how the nucleuses were, were comprised of dipoles. And I, I think I damn well proved what I was saying. And, um, and now I believe I have more proof. So I am continuing on. Make yourself a book like this. You see this? This, this is, you see every day I, that somebody new came up with something, I would have to investigate it and try to figure out if they were right or wrong or what I thought of what their situation was, what, what they were saying. This went on for 50 years. <laughs> but this was my original take on everything. This was 1970. So that's a long time. That's 51 years ago. Now, I went into business, so I didn't go into the academic realm and just make up little theories and stuff. I went out and actually did the work, and I was pretty good at what I did. I'm just going to, like I say, it's time to brag. I was a field engineering manager. I ran a Connecticut region. Eastern region scoreboard, December. Well, this, I finished... Roger Spur and his Connecticut Yankees finished the last quarter, combined quarter profit objective, astounding 360%. <laughs> they will receive their plaque shortly. Nice going, Roger. Da, da, da. Well, I was, a, I was a field engineering guy. What does field engineering mean? It means well, back then in 1970, this was 78, but in the 70s, they were just starting to put out these electronic machines. When I started, they were adding machines with, you know, clunk, clunk, and they were all electromechanical, they called it. Then they started into electronics. 
That's what I was hired for because when I was in the Army, I did Nike Hercules missiles. Before that, I was with General Electric doing some other stuff. When I was very young, my father got me into this stuff because he was, he was, uh, he was a genius, absolutely unbelievable. His name was Eugene. They called him Eugenius. <laughs> he went to Tufts and he had the highest marks they've ever had in that school. That's a, I, believe me, I saw that report card a hundred times. <laughs> All A pluses. That's when I used to give A and A plus and all that business. Now, and then he went on to become general manager of Wallingford Steel Company, stainless steel, super metal, stripped. That. He knew more about material composition than anybody, probably breathing oxygen. He was, he, and what they did down there was they made these super metals, super metals. One day I was talking to him. Uh, uh, I had to go get a new muffler for my car or something. He says, I could make a muffler the last 200 years. <laughs> and I, I think he was in, the, the military probably told these people, don't, don't make these good things because the Russians will get them and then they'll blow us up. I'm telling you, this is what happened. It was a, it was a denial of, of science to keep science restricted for military purposes. It's just unbelievable what we have been through and, and still going through today. It's exactly the same. They won't, nobody will talk to me about this. They'd rather see the planet destroyed than see free energy. That's what my, I'm, that's my take now, I'm telling you, I'm sorry. I, I just feel very, very distressed over the lack of interest of what is so obvious. And, uh, well, I'll leave it there. Okay, my friends, we are in a situation now where the climate is out of control and we need to get free energy in the electron range so that it's restricted and it doesn't expand and cause our atmosphere to explode even more than it is. So we need to create muons, which are charged leptons, like an electron, but 200 times heavier. If we can do that, we can have free energy because it's 200 times heavier than the particle it started from. We have done this and we can harvest this energy within weeks instead of years. Okay, I said we have colors is one of the things and that's the same particle as the green or the blue, only the spin is slower. Here's the green. You see, it's the exact same particle. No difference whatsoever, only it's more energetic because it spins faster, as I believe I showed you. Now, um, all right, so the color is literally the color. So now we're back to a red photon, which is a particle here, which I showed you the white and black balls, or green and black, or red and black, whatever you want to call them. And it, may, it has a box of particles that look just about like this, as we saw before. And now it's being accelerated through a venturi, and the particles literally ripped from the wave, just like a jet fighter accelerating. Now, the acceleration creates an extremely heavy particle here, 200 times heavier than when we started. So now we're gonna, we went from the color, we're going to be talking about flavor. They just, just, don't worry about just very simple, simple. Flavor means when it first came in, it was just a red and black particle, which is what they call the neutrino flavor. All right. Then you went into the neutrino showers, which are the um, electron showers. All right. Remember, started out like this, the black and red ball, black and green ball, whatever you want to call it, coming down, and they're, at that point they're just basically, this is the flavor of them, and they're not exploding yet. When they create the electron showers, the muon doesn't change at all. That is literally dark matter. You know, I can't see anybody can argue with that. It's gravity, it's dark matter, and it's it sucks white balls back to it instantly after they separate at the venturi. And they do separate at the venturi. The black ones just go around, and the white ones go through into the shower mode, identical to what CERN wants. Now let's just take a look at that really quickly, but don't forget, these are what they call the flavors. The other ones are the colors, just literally the color, and the, these are the flavors. Is a strictly the muon and electron neutrino before it concusses. When it concusses, the muon doesn't change its name or its status. It stays exactly the same. The electron turns into electron showers, and at that point, 
the particles literally break apart. They come apart. The black separates from the white. And this is exactly, exactly what CERN wants and says this is the W and Z bosons 200 times more energetic when they started in. And I can't argue with that. I have no argument there. So we have to take it before it hits back into the black particles and just gets reabsorbed into just normal light. But here it's 100% Electron, 100%. There's no black there, none, zero, zero, zero. All of these are where the muons move to. I know it's a, it blows my mind. I can't help it, but it's uh, that's what it is. The muons moved around, and the electrons made a shower. We harvest it there. We got free energy, and we could do this in a couple of weeks. We could have free energy things just shooting off the shelves. All right, now listen to this. This is why I'm kind of upset because nobody will listen to my discussion about how we might be able to solve this situation. I think it at least merits some sort form of discussion. He's saying this is a permanent emergency. This is not a temporary thing. We're going to have problems with water and everything else after this. Here it goes. That is why it is so disturbing. Our entire West is built on, on irrigation. And if we don't have that, we don't have an economy. Our agricultural base is based on having moisture in topsoil, much less to have irrigation supplies. And our forest fires are just, our forests are just ready to blow up right now. And we're looking at a permanent situation. That's why we have to attack the source of this problem, which is climate change. Exactly. They, they are in deep trouble, and we are in deep trouble everywhere. And there's another factor that comes into play, which we have to examine it, very critically what happens with 5G, because it is a microwave transmission which breaks water molecules, which means the water molecules expand. Nothing more than just like making steam, which is expands water by 1,600 times. We are just expanding our envelope, causing this issue. And we, we have to look at this critically, and I, it's a disaster. My kids will never see a, a normal end of their life. They'll, we're going to burn up if we don't do this, and, I mean instantly. And we, this nonsense of, oh, 2035, we're going to be able to do, maybe get a little of this, a little of that. It's, by that time, there's no more Earth. I'm going to tell you that right now. This is no question whatsoever we are in desperate situation right now.